Hello everyone and welcome to episode 146 of our Korean podcast. Our today's guest is Mr. Hugh May. He's a freelance illustrator from Hanoi, Vietnam. Oh, xin chào tất cả mọi người. Chào mừng mọi người tới uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah, I was supposed to say that myself, but I kept messing it up. So he obliged and helped me with the introduction. So yeah, we'll keep the tradition going in some sort. No, no worries. And well, by the way, before we start, uh, I need to make I like to mention this stuff early in the each episode. Like in the caption down below, you can see his Instagram, art station, Twitter, and YouTube channel. You know, go check him out if you're interested. And also, I mean, of, of course, in the right side of the like the screen, you can see all the real of his works as well. If you're into that sort of art and illustration, go check him out. Right now, with that quick introduction out of the way, let's jump into the first question I ask everyone. Give us a little introduction on how we got into the world of visual arts and design. Um, wait, wait, can you elaborate on that? I don't... I mean, like, what happened? Like, when, at one point, you realized that you wanted to become an artist? Uh, Dragon Ball. I was really into, like, the Dragon Balls, like, manga or comic for the Americans as a kid and then I just copy off the drawings and then it grew on and on and on and my drawing were like really shit as a kid but like you know how parents are they're like ooh really nice they're really awesome oh, yeah <laughs> it you know, was that like, new name you yeah. said that right yeah yeah oh, like, what's Whoa. this I like it Picasso <laughs> yeah I like being uh, complimented so like well I should do this more and it's just roller coaster into me right now i mean it it didn't end up bad i mean so you know this is something yeah. to say like you know don't tell you tell your kids how it is like you know stuff like that but yeah i mean look there's a result right now like i mean uh yeah being like encouraging is always better like honestly than to yeah. be like you know some ben shapiro being like ben shapiro you know like it's supposedly let's imagine that you know your art is not is shit like you know don't be like that you know i like, just yeah. yeah, I mean it's a lot better for Americans or like Western in like Asia. Like most people believe like, like you know, like if you teach your kid to like draw or sing, they're gonna become like a hobo or something. You know, like there's no future, no money, no nothing. You know. Yeah, some hippie who t- smokes weed and do drugs and just lives in his or her's world of like, you know, art and, you know, they, they think like this. Yeah, I know, like in Middle East, it's kind of like this as well. But I mean, fortunately, it's been changing, like, you know. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, yeah. But I could imagine, like, you know, East Asian countries and cultures are, yeah, a bit more like a still a street. Yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. And, uh, well, I mean, as you said, like, you know, you started with Dragon Ball and all those animes, but... When you were like 17, 18, like was like, you know, your parents and yourself were sure that you wanted to become an artist? Like, you know, were there any doubts that you said, oh, maybe I should go, I don't know, study business or engineering or something, you know? Yeah, I'm actually studying economics right now because my mother wanted me to have like a like a plan B in case my finger just fall off or like I break my hand somewhere, you know? Like, <laughs> just, <laughs> just so I don't actually like become jobless, even though being a freelancer is basically having no job for Asian parents, I guess. Yeah, I mean, that's that's actually like, like an interesting insight, the way your mother, like, you know, said that. That's actually really smart, like, honestly, like, if you would ask, if you told me this, like, a year ago, I would have disagreed. And I was like, no, that's too, like, pessimistic, you know, you shouldn't really worry so much. But now, like, you know, that I've grown up a bit, I'm really, no, like, she actually knew something that told you that. And uh, that's kind of smart. Like, you know, if you can, of course, like if you can afford university, like to get a major that it could potentially be a plan B, like, you know, as you said, maybe, just maybe, like, you know, it's, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be something happened to you. Like, let's say tomorrow, like that art industry just, you know, collapsed. Like it, it, it's a weird, like, you know, analogy, but it's always good to have like a plan B, like not be one dimensional, basically. Like, yeah. for me personally, like, yes, I'm trying to learn on myself. I'm not a professional. I'm not even an ama- amateur, but, you know, I'm just trying to learn 3D. But at the same time, the thing that, you know, is helping me, like, get an income is actually English teaching. So Ooh. I kind of have that as well. Uh, so, yeah, it's always a good idea not to be, like, one-dimensional in anything. Yeah. And, I mean, uh, I mean, yeah, it's my, I mean, it's not to, like, like move me away from my passion to, like, and like everyone I know is kind of very supportive of me doing the art thing, but just like be safe and have like a backup. Yeah. 
yeah definitely i can uh, yeah i can imagine what it's like and well i mean in the introduction i already mentioned that you're an illustrator as well freelance illustrator and you kind of mentioned it yourself but i want i was wondering like you know what part of illustration are you like focusing mainly right now is are you doing character design mostly or you might want to dwell in i mean of course it's mostly characters on your page but i was wondering are you going to dwell into like you know get into environment and visual development or you're just going to stay strictly on character art Mm, i am practicing more on like environments because because like why not you know like i people can hire a guy who can do multiple stuff um I have been forced to draw uh, environments for money. I do not like it. <laughs> it was a horrible, horrible experience for me. I do not like drawing backgrounds and environment. I just enjoy. No, not. It's not saying that it's bad. It's it's not for me. But I will try to learn more of it. Yeah, I'm on the way yet. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's. Uh, I think. Do you know Ahmed Al Duri? Yeah, yeah, I you, I. you know, he did a meds map course like in the early summer, late spring. You remember that, right? Yeah, yeah, I was on. Uh, uh, I remember I was on a Discord call with him one time talking about that. Mm, yeah, and um, he's apparently working on an environment course, the mm. same as style. Yeah, I'm kind of I'm kind of interested for that. So shout out to Ahmed Alduri. We'll, we're all keeping in touch on your new course, my man. Yeah, <laughs> and. <My God. laughs> And well, here's another thing. I mean, uh, about your illustrations, I mean, like, I mean, we can talk about them more in the, like, the later stages of the podcast, but, like, when I saw your last post where there's this doggo <laughs> in, like, a non <laughs> I, I, I instantly, like, I like, I like this guy's art. Like, he it seems cool. Then I scrolled down, and then I saw this, like, you know, uh, illustration you did for your birthday, and it's just a sad Pepe doing, like, a drawing. Like, I was, I, was, I want to have this guy on the podcast. This seems cool. Oh. <laughs> you know, I'll put them in the reel as well here for anyone who's wondering. And for the audio listeners as well, you can check him out on, you know, the first post of the Instagram uh, in the Instagram page or on the YouTube version. Yeah. And yeah, it's, but I look yourself yeah, like like a picture yeah. flowing in the background right now. No, no, it's actually here. Like if you see the video version of like the podcast, like uh-huh. basically you're here and I'm here and there's a reel here, like in the format of your work. I'm just, you know, pointing to that. Okay, so I'm gonna point like, like yes, this. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And well, I mean, now we talked a little bit about like some general stuff, but let's look a bit into some, you know, technical stuff. Like a, a, a little bit technical question. Yeah, How yeah. does your design process usually go anytime you want to start working on a piece? Like, basically, what does the structure of your pipeline look like when you are when you want to start working on a piece from zero to 100? Mm, okay, so so on the technical side, right, on the... On the artist side, we have like the like the normal workflow, like from sketch to line art to base color, and then and then render, I guess, and the final render. So basically, four step. And if we're talking like how I think, then I spend more of the time in the uh, sketch and the idea phase to make it like to make sure that the final composition and the actual idea itself is entertaining and fun to look at. Yeah, so that's the whole thing. All right. And um, what is the first art job paycheck you ever got? And what was it for? And how did you feel at the time when you got it? Wait, what was the what? <laughs> what was the first basically salary you ever made out of art? Oh, yeah. Um, it was in high school, I think. And some random dude asked me to draw like a like a logo or like a cartoon character on what is like baseball team and <laughs> and the amount was uh like 10 20 dollars or something and it took me like months like a really really long time because the the guy was like an asshole and i keep making a version here like oh but i want this guy to change into that and just keep changing 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 and i was too green i didn't know how to like deal with it so i just accepted like a like a bitch you know I changed, <laughs> but I changed now, you know, that's, that was my first experience. Yeah. Yeah. You're now on the Sigma male grind set right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. Like I was, I'm wondering like how many of my like listeners actually can understand the references we're making along the podcast. 
because I don't think not many like they're usually way more mature like you know than us <laughs> like you know my the podcast audience so yeah yeah I wish I wish we had some more memers along I don't know yeah but get I, more another, fun. yeah another thing I'm kind of noticing like I, I even went through like you know some of your old work like you know from uh, your Instagram <laughs> and, it, and it was obvious that you know your traditional sketching skills like honestly it was it was it was actually still solid but I think you started like digital a bit late, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, uh, like, like after midway in high school, yeah. That was, I, I tell you a good one. Like, imagine, like, okay, if you draw traditionally, you don't really have to convince anyone, right? You just have to, like, it's a pen and a piece of paper. It's really not that expensive. But then you have to convince, I have to convince my mom to, to like help me get a get a laptop to actually go digital, so it was it was hard, yeah. But but she got faith. She buy me like a really expensive. Both me and my brother actually, he's sitting right there. Like we both want to go into digital, and you know how hard it is to convince. Like oh, I want to do art as a career. You know how how can you convince your parents to do such a thing? But she believed in us, so she buy both of us to uh, Wacom and to like MacBook Pro, which is like the most expensive thing ever, you know? But but then but then like her investment come through. Like we start making money, we start working like normally. You know, like yeah, it was like a like a great investment and trust from, from my mom. Yeah. Awesome. Shout out to all the moms out there, you know, that are helping and supporting their children. That's awesome. That's awesome to hear. But I mean literally that six digital posts you posted on your Instagram is just Ainsley Harriet. And I love that. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, it's so cursed. I need to scroll back. I can't sit look at that. <laughs> All right. Um, now here's the thing, like, you know, through some of the subjects of your know, stuff, I mean, it seems that, you know, we kind of share the same passions and interests and, um, tell me about some of your favorite animes and also video games that have inspired you a lot. Um, favorite animes, uh, One Punch Man, because of the animation. Mm. Uh, do you know it? Yeah, of course, of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and the opening too. And favorite oh, video. Shit, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The opening, the opening is so hype. Yeah. And and I like how like they implemented it into the show and not just like an opening. Like when he beat up the final boss or something, they played the opening. It was mm-hmm, yeah, okay. But uh, <laughs> uh, favorite video game, mm, Dark Soul Three, uh, Dark Soul One. Mm, Dark Soul. You played all Dark Souls, right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, I yeah, of course. And um, <laughs> actually, here's the thing. Let me tell you about my experience with, like, you know, the first Souls-type game. Like, you know, it's basically a genre at this point. Like, there's Bloodborne, there's Sekiro, there's a lot of things. But I, the first game I played was Dark Souls 3. And here's the thing. When I installed it on my PC, like, every all the inputs were in, like, the controller, like, the Xbox or P- PlayStation type of input, you know, everything, there was no like, you know, set for parry or dodge, do this key. It was all in, you know, PlayStation input, but I was still playing on my laptop, right? So I was like, you know, I kind of got used to it. I went and, you know, in the beginning, there's like a secret area in the beginning of the game where there's like a crystal like monster. Yeah. That yeah. crystal. And uh, it was my fir- like first non zombie NPC and my dumbass who didn't know how these games are just, you know, pain and struggle. I just went and attacked it with the left kitty and I was waiting for it to charge. And when it woke up, it showed itself bar. I was like, oh shit, I didn't even do any damage. And it just two shot me. And I was like, hmm, what should I do? So I went on Google and it's and I saw like a one minute YouTube video and it says just engage the enemy and run, run, run and stand on this edge of a cliff and once it charges, just dodge. What? No, that's you can actually do that. You can actually, sorry, a spoiler alert. Spoiler alert for anyone who haven't played the game. Um, but yeah, you can actually kill the boss like that. And it actually gives you the loot, which is weird because the, the monster jumps to his death. So yeah, I don't know how the loot just gets, gets back magically. 
but yeah, yeah basically you can cheese the game a lot yeah uh, yeah, but it's no fun. Like you have to struggle for these games to feel some sort of accomplishment when you beat the boss. Yeah, but I don't know. I'm too old for like you know this kind of games. I guess. Yeah. For pain. <laughs> yeah. Spe- <laughs> speaking of pain, I also recently discovered Berserk, the anime and manga. Have you watched or seen anything from it? Yeah, I have read the manga up to like the latest thing. The but, entire manga. Well, yeah, but like it's not finished or it will never be finished i guess yeah, because the writer and the like kentaro minor or something his name i think died in 2021 he passed away and it's kind of like you know tragic because a lot of people on the berserk reddit would make fun that you know the berserk manga would never finish like you know the, the writer would die eventually and it would never get finished and it actually happened so yeah it's kind of weird yeah um yeah, a lot of people are saying that about, about even about Ichirio Oda, the, like the you know writer of One Piece. I hope he has some sort of backup, like you know what happens if Luffy actually finds One Piece, or you know a lot of people theorize that the One Piece is actually the friendship they made along the way. Yeah. But you know we'll see what what it actually is. Yeah, but, but Oda yeah. finds so hard though. Like Oda, like pumps mm-hmm. out after so much faster compared to yeah. But no, no offense to Berserk, but like One Piece just come out weekly, like at an insane rate. I guess yeah but but i honestly like you know recommend anyone to check out berserk if they're into manga or like good story writing like honestly like yeah, yeah. it's such a unique once in a generation piece in my opinion and i only discovered it like a week ago and here's the thing as i said like you know i think this is the fifth time i said i'm getting too old for this stuff but i didn't actually watch the anime or read the manga <laughs> i did something that you know you'll probably everyone's gonna hate me by saying this but I kind of do this myself. I kind of spoil stuff for myself to see if I actually like it. So what I did was I went on YouTube and searched the entire timeline of Berserk. And there was a two hour, three hour video explaining everything in detail from zero to, you know, after the eclipse, the golden age, the conviction arc, everything. So I kind of <laughs> spoiled everything for myself. And I know the whole story, like with just one YouTube video. And I didn't, and I don't have to watch all this anime episodes or anything. It's kind of fun. Just try it sometime. <laughs> No, no, that's no way to enjoy it. <laughs> nah. No, I mean, but here's the thing. Now that I spoiled it for myself and I actually liked it, I'm going to get into it more. So, I mean, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not necessarily a bad tactic. Yeah. It's should, it should their own ways of enjoying stuff, I guess. But nah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, some stuff I agree. Like, you know, I'd rather not get spoiled by, like... Here's the thing, like if Obsidian tries to make Fallout New Vegas 2, for example, which New Vegas was one of my favorite games of all time, I will go into mountains and not come back so I don't see any hint of spoiling on the internet. Then when I realize it's out, I'm going to go back from my cave and try to play it, you know, for the first time. Yeah, Twitter like likes to spoil a lot of stuff. Even they spoil the ending of Attack on Titan for anime, like you know, people who don't read the manga. I mean, I, I already knew I kind of spoiled the whole manga for myself, like even like a year ago, so I knew what was gonna happen. But yeah, I, of course, I'm not gonna say anything uh, in this podcast, but yeah, a lot of people got spoiled at the ending, which is kind of bummer, you know. Uh, I mean, it's more like because I mean, you already play like. Vegas one, so like you you know you're gonna like the second one if they come out with one. So it's kinda of hard for like to get people to get their attention on like a new IP, I guess. So it's easier yeah. to just watch a YouTube video on like <laughs> Yeah, yeah, true, true, true. Um there's a lot of things I haven't still gotten into because uh like I don't know, maybe I don't know, maybe I'm just dead inside and I don't realize it because I can't enjoy anything anymore. And sometimes, like, the only entertainment I can get is just, like, you know, watch a YouTube video of it about it. Like, like the only, like, you know, it like, not not that I'm dead inside, my standards has have gotten really high. Like, something has to be actually really good or interesting for me to actually get into it, you know? Like, I can't just waste my time, like, you know, on random stuff, like, because I'm actually super busy right now. Yeah. But... An anime that I recently watched, and I actually finished it today, like the one of the last season, is Baki Hanma. Have you seen it? Yeah, 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 really good. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the prison arc as well? Uh, no, I only, I, I haven't seen the anime, I only read the manga. Oh, so you're way after, like, even, I think, because the anime is way behind the manga, I mean, obviously. Yeah, and... but it's been a long time, so, so I'm not... Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm not really clear on, like, any of the, any of the plot points. It's been, like, 
so long since I read it. So. Oh yeah, so manga culture is pretty strong in Vietnam as well, right? Yeah, it's strong in all of Asia, I guess. I mean, hmm. it's Japanese. Oh, oh, yeah, I mean, yeah. of course, yeah, it makes sense. And have you seen that video of John Cena apolog- apologizing to Chairman Xi Ping of saying Vietnam is a country? <laughs> like, there's a whole meme video of him saying Ping Chiling. Have you seen that? <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just so dumb. What do you think about that? Like the whole geopolitical? Nah, I'm just kidding. Like, but honestly, what's all what's this all bullshit about? Like China saying like Vietnam is not a country. Oh, fuck that! Fuck that! Oh, yeah, exactly. I get all the Chinese fans to come after my ass. <laughs> no, it's, uh, no, I don't think they will. I mean, they can understand. I mean, most people like I'm from Iran. Yes, I mean, I, I know, and I don't want to get too political, but yeah, we. Like only fifteen to twenty percent of the population only supports the government. The rest of us are extremely against it, like really against it, because it's a dictatorship. And yeah, same goes with Ru- Russia and China and all these other countries, you know. Yeah. And yeah. By the way, like, are you hyped about Elden Ring? Yeah, yeah, very, very much, very much. Yeah, it's basically Dark Soul with open world I guess so more time to play it more time to just do nothing and not be productive I guess yeah and playing playing the playing Dark Souls 3 and all of the other Souls games is basically like suck all of my time to draw in the last like recent month I guess you know this uh, this artist uh, Thomas Chamberlain Keen Mm, who? Oh, uh, Thomas Chamberlain Keen. He's like a really famous artist. Ah, uh, Thomas Chamberlain Keen? Yeah, Keen with K E E N. Thomas. Thomas C H B N? No. Huh, I can't find him, but. Yeah, all right, but I'll check it later. Like, anyway, he he, he joined like a. He, he's like a really big artist, right? And. And you normally just only look at an artist from a far away, like you don't really see anything of them other than the professional work. And you know, one day he just randomly joined like a like a Bloodborne art contest randomly, and he produced like one of the coolest like fan art piece ever. And you know, it's just it's so random, like a Marvel artist suddenly do a Dark Soul fan art. You know, uh, I mean, if you can put it on the video to like, yeah, 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 I can, I can. If you send it to me later, I'll definitely do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very good. I wonder if is this is there any way I can show you right now to see your reaction to it. Yeah, you can send it to me all the stuff if you want. I I can put it in the reel as well, like you know later. But I don't think it has a share screen here. Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. I was speaking of that. That that's actually a good segue to the next question. Um, who are your favorite artists and designers that have inspired you the most? Um, traditional. I enjoy, you know Kim Jong Gi, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm obsessed with that guy, and digitally, I really like uh, Cynic's design. You know him too, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, his uh, yeah. videos on design theory is amazing. Yeah, yeah. I I joined uh, one of his uh, Chromacorp art contests recently. Oh, it was so much fun. We I actually get to talk to him and stuff. I mean. It's it's probably normal to you, but like I'm, like I'm I'm not a like a, a big deal. I'm like just a normal person, and I just Dude, ask come you. on, like you know your art is way better than. <laughs> yeah, but imagine like, you actually just accidentally get to talk to like a random big, like like basically like a like a fucking hero or something, you know, like someone you look at like a long it's time. It's like you talk to a Spider Man or something. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or my morales if you're black <laughs> yeah yeah I mean that's that's the end of the story <laughs> yeah I get it Boy. it's fine like you know um, here's the thing like I'm gonna be honest with you about something like at first when I had the podcast like he yes I wasn't like always confident to like in myself to talk to people normally I was a bit more reserved than shy and yeah, it took a lot of time for me to, you know, get comfortable with this, but like, it was like having once or twice that this happened, but one of the times that it happened, do you know Ian McQueen? 
Yeah, yeah. Ooh. He's literally one of my favorite artists of all time. That like his work. It's because basically it's the same niche that I love. And he didn't come on the podcast, but I messaged him. And here's the weird thing: his page is like four hundred fifty something thousand, and he responded to my DMs. And I asked him, "Hey, do you want to come on the podcast?" Like the same thing I even told you. And he said, "No, sorry, I'm busy." And I asked him again, like, "Can I?" like message you in a couple of months and I said yeah you can try but i'm busy the whole day and you know that even though he didn't say yes but i was so pumped i was like yay cinema mcqueen cinema mcqueen you know i was like kind of so like yeah. <laughs> but yeah that's actually it would be really awesome if i could have him one day on the podcast maybe some yeah or someday someday who knows someday, and, yeah right maybe next year <laughs> yeah i mean yeah maybe this year you know who knows like you know when, when you never know, you know, when someone uh, says yes or says no. And, uh, but yeah, I mean, I can understand, you know, the, the way you were feeling, you know, at the time when you were speaking to cynics. Yeah. And, I mean, it's well, as in how like artists are like really like friendly, like you just text them and they answer. And like, it's, they're really like friendly. Like, it's, yeah. I mean, you shouldn't be surprised, but they are very friendly. Like, if you just reply to you. Yeah, majority is. I would say the majority is, yes, majority is friendly. Like nice people, especially like here's a weird thing in the 3D community. Like it's kind of a weird niche thing that I'm saying, but the most supportive, like you know, group of people that I've seen in the community is 3D community, especially in Blender stuff. Like people are so supportive and like you know just encouraging, you know. Yeah, they just like come and answer all of your like questions and stuff. Yeah, it's kind of awesome. Yeah. But I mean, with things like, you know, especially character design and illustration, you know, it, it because it gets a bit crowded and like majority of like, you know, um, young adults who want to get into art, they are interested because of character art mostly. Because you, you, it, you find some people who are into landscapes and environment, but it's way, way less than people who are interested in character arts, you know? So sometimes because yeah. of that... Um, the majority of questions that gets asked are like, you know, those typical annoying questions that artists really hate. Like, what brushes do you use? Like, you know, what programs do you use? Should I try to learn traditional then go like, you know, this type of stuff, which here's the thing I can empathize, you know, because of course, you know, I was also a beginner one day and I could, you know, relate with this stuff. But because of that, I don't, I think you, you, you there's sort of a barrier between sometimes artists and, you know, the, people who are fans, you know? Because they, they kind of, you know, they rarely... Um, the response rates are less, basically. That's what I'm trying to say, because of that. And... Um, I enjoy like creative question, you know, more than just like, well, what brush do you use? Oh, you can just literally like scroll down and another dude already asked that, you know? Or not just yeah. that. I mean, even if you set up an FAQ, like, you know, here's the thing, like, actually, interesting thing about I found out about brushes. You only need, like, two or three brushes. Even the basic Photoshop brush, brushes are mo- most of the time enough. Like, yeah, don't, in like, you shouldn't try to, like, you know, uh, mess with yourself with, you know, these technical, like, you know, questions. Like, even if you use Krita or Clips to Paint, just get the mileage in. Like, that's the point. Yeah. Like, those are, like, unnecessary. And, um... Do you have anything to add to that? I mean, I mean, like a lot of time, like it's just like just just grind it, I guess. And I mean, you probably spend like two hours looking for the right brush. I mean, the right brush is very cool, but you know, you could just draw and grind through it. I mean, each to their own. Some a lot of pro artists actually enjoy having custom brushes, so you know. Each, each of their own, I guess, but but like it's like a habit to them. Like they search for a new brush, and then the next month they search for another brush, and then another brush, and they just keep on like searching for like this non-existing answer. Like then you should just like get through with all the basic first, and then I mean I'm not one to teach. Like my art is not that great, but you should go through with all the. You, if you can draw what you want with like the basic round brush, and yeah, then you can find like better brushes, I guess. Brush, please. <laughs> yeah. And, well, what are you working on right now that you can tell us about? What kind of project is it? I mean, of course, if it's something that there's NDAs involved, like we can skip right past this question. But if that's not the case, what are you doing right now? Uh, yeah, mostly just freelancing. I'm doing uh, 
a personal piece that is taking quite some time because of all the freelancing and dog so free but <laughs> but, but I'm, yeah it's it's kind of it's kind of boring for me actually because like the the most passionate thing for me is like the uploading personal project personal like drawing like the dog or none thing <laughs> and those stuff took like a really long time because it's not about the uh, the the rendering anymore it's, it's not about the actual like quality of the drawing is more about the idea like people enjoy the the idea of that painting you know like it's a very i would say enjoyable picture not just as for artists but like for a normal person to look at it and whoa that's pretty cool and they they, they like it so i have to like like pick a good idea of all of like a hundred like ideas not just rendering because uh, we was I'm past that anyway. Like it's not a hard decision for me anymore. It's about the the actual content of the drawing, I guess. So yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's a long answer. <laughs> no, no, that's actually good, like a really brief, good answer. And um, here's the thing: I kind of want to suggest something to you. I mean, I've, you're probably thinking about it as well. But you, but before I ask that, I want to ask something else. Hmm. Have you read the James Gurney book on lighting and color? And whether yes or no, please also uh, like you know explain like how did you goose, got so good at lighting and coloring? Like honestly, um, I have read the first page of that book, <laughs> and I save it on my bookstore and, and then never touch it again. Um, not not because of James Gurney, it's because of me, right? Like I'm lazy, you know. Um, how how I practice my lighting and coloring, or uh, like, yeah. How did you like you know practice your lighting and coloring? I got you kind of developed this kind of stylized uh, like you know format in your works. Like basically, in comparison to like a lot of other artists, like it just shows that you have a really good understanding of light and color. Yeah, like uh, some. Like okay, I don't know the the like the correct like the academic way of doing it. Like I'm obviously not academically like trained. I guess I just practice from Dragon Ball. <laughs> but uh, the way is I'm not saying this is the correct way, but it's the way that I do it. It was that I was just copying. Like I was copying faces, and then. Like after you copy like 100 or like 1,000 faces, then you can kind of draw the 1,001 faces out of your imagination, right? And you do the same with like clothing. You do the same with like armor. And then you copy a bunch of people good coloring and you can make up color out of your imagination. Like you just do that and then your like 1,001 of each of everything would be like, like if I draw a hat, it's like, this is my 1,000 hat, so I can pull one out of my ass, right? I can, then I pull this, everything I just pull out of my ass, and then bam, like it just become my style, and I don't even know why. It just, it just is, like it just all comes together, and people, well, how do you find your style? I mean, I mean, you are like, like, an individual, right? So, so by the time you are finished with all of the of the basic of like when you never finished with them, but you mean like when you kind of get the hang of the basic of drawing, you should have your own like style by then, I guess. So you shouldn't look for the style. Just, just the way I do it, just copy. So just just copy a lot. It's very boring. You could do it any other way. But copy is very fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's actually a really good answer. So basically a lot of studies from other people's works and also from photo photographs and, you know, references like that, just try to copy and em- emulate them one-to-one. And yeah, yeah, that's actually a really solid answer. You know, just get the hang of like the first very basics, like, you know, of uh, line work and get some mileage in, in perspective and all of that stuff. Then when you learn the basics of, for example, let's say Photoshop or other any other software, then it starts emulating. Try your best to emulate. Maybe you find you'll realize if you go with that direction, you're you're like okay, you don't really 
restrain yourself to this whole mindset that, all right, what brushes do I need to use? What this guy use? You just say, all right, I just need to do this. Doesn't matter the software, doesn't matter the brush. I just need to get this done. Or for example, you're doing a jungle piece. You're like, hmm, if I use this like, you know, tree brush, maybe it helps me like emulate that better. So mm-hmm. if you keep yourself in this emulation mindset, I think it's much more better. And um, here's a problem. Most people and even tutorials or even masters because they've been in the field so much that they kind of forgot like how it's like to be a beginner. So they 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 might you know give you some tips and you know explain some stuff, but they 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 need to like you know here's the thing: learning things should be pr- broken into tasks. That's how you know our brains really work and work better and understand stuff. So yeah, basically get the basics like the very basics of working with the ui if a software done get the basics of like you know on a pen and paper or pencil or whatever like and to, to the traditional done these two is done now start emulating that's it yeah 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 i mean the problem with a lot of people just give up is like like i don't know do you actually enjoy drawing i mean you you get you get like tiring at some i guess like middle level but as a beginner and as a professional, like you should enjoy doing this, right? So, so you should like automatically come back to it no matter what. So if you just drop, I mean, I mean that's a brittle spirit, man. <laughs> like that's that's nothing, I guess. I don't know. Don't come attacking me. All right, and well, let's take a break from all this, like you know art talking art learning talk and let me ask you something else yeah what area beside the area you're working on right now which is of course illustration and art would you be interested to explore and learn in the future it could be completely something non-art related um hmm. can you elaborate like here's the thing imagine if um you didn't you couldn't do art anymore for example right mm-hmm. this is a scenario if there wasn't art, what else would you like to? What else would you likely have gone to do? Um, I would have enjoyed writing, <laughs> like, like just. I mean, if you look at my uh, my my paintings, like not as you know, it's it's not just like as painting, but like as a product. Then and you see what I'm trying to aim at. Like, I always aim at like entertainment you know what I like I always try to like what will entertain people enough to to make them like this so like the very basic of it is like okay you got a piece of art that have really like good skills like the person who made this have like a lot of skills so other artists will like it it's like a gym bro thing but but normal people don't seem, doesn't really give a fuck right so <laughs> so we got that problem so how do you get like Okay, so now go back to maybe like the the thing that I did. So both the artists who admire the the skills and the normal person who admire the idea like it. So we get like the like the whole thing. So maybe if I go to writing, I can also keep a part of that. I want to entertain people. Let's make some cool idea, but into writing. I mean, that's that's my plan. I still have to like <laughs> if my finger got fucked up. <laughs> Yeah, and um, that's kind of interesting. By the way, do you have any sketchbook nearby? I should have asked you earlier, but I forgot. Do you have any sketchbook nearby you can show us? Oh, <laughs> does this count? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it could count. Yeah, sure. Like some of your sketches. Oh, um, yeah, actual sketchbook, I don't think I have them anymore. I mostly sketch on iPad. Yeah, on the iPad. Oh, sneak cool. peek on the <laughs> new stuff. Uh, oh, I can like let me show you. Ah, oh, the nun. I should not show like images on a podcast, right? Um, does it... uh, no, actually, on a YouTube version, you know, people. I upload the full YouTube, like the video version, on YouTube as well. By the way. Oh, oh okay. Wait, so I can show you like the, the process of it. Ah. Oh, wait, you didn't upload this on Instagram. Yeah, not not yet. Not yet. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you should do. <laughs> and honestly, like, here's the thing. Like, you should, I think, you know, after a while, maybe, maybe you can even do it right now, by the way. Like, you know, because you kind of develop this kind of stylized uh, way of illus- illustration, you could literally sell a, sell a course really good. Like, you know, maybe it doesn't matter where on Skillshare or something. Oh, 
like you know because i think you know you can definitely like you know make a course about like character illustration and you know developing the styles and all of that stuff because i think you have enough like you know portfolio to do that and i think and i personally believe it will sell well because a lot of people are looking for those type of tips and experiences you know mm. yeah but i want to be like the uh like like the old confident guy but like no it doesn't matter no no it's not about that like you're looking at it the wrong way actually so, like you should have like i mean you already made work and you don't claim to be a master you know you say all right i know this stuff you like my artwork you want to learn from my own personal experience you can get this course and i'll support the artist and uh, what's wrong with that or mm. even something better maybe not course maybe make a patreon uh, is paypal uh, working in vietnam um i don't know but i can always yeah i think it will work. or i can ask oh. a friend or something yeah that's awesome if if it does because uh yeah um you i think you should definitely do that i mean li literally especially patreon like you could you know do breakdowns and you know for example the process you showed me of the, the like the dog non dog or something whatever the was uh <laughs> you can post it on patreon and you know say like tell your details and breakdowns and make a discord server so people who want to you know um you know what i mean i think that could really work and even based on you know your followers yeah. i think that could even start with like lead to a good start you know and I only say this because I think yeah. it actually works. I'm not trying to like bullshit you or something. Like I think it actually works. Yeah. Idea, by the way. Okay, this may sound like a bit of bullshit, but I'm still actually waiting for it to be even bigger before yeah, I start I this. Understand. Yeah, and yeah, that's actually also <laughs> a smart idea. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Is there anything else? What? what? Is there anything else you wanted to add? Um, no, not not really. No, I mean, <laughs> that's, that's all I, I have, I guess. Yeah, all right. <laughs> well, that's actually kind of good because we have reached the final question of the podcast, which is called Ooh. Final Words. All right, let me explain. Imagine in the limited amount of time you have right now, you have an opportunity, a window of time to say anything from yourself as a human to another human being. And that another human being is anyone who's listening to this podcast at any point in the future. So, with that being said, what would you say to them? Stop telling me that I have talent. <laughs> That's fucking annoying. I know you have like good intention, but... I don't have talent. I have a lot of time and I spend that time practicing. Talent may or may not be real, but even if it's real, it's not important. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> it's really, it's really, okay, I know they have good intention, right? But, but come on, like, ooh, you're so lucky you have good talent. No, no, I look, I practice like a long ass time, like, 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 10 years, maybe more. I don't actually like just spawn to have good art out of like at the hospital. So, you know, I mean, yeah, maybe it's just phrasing, but yeah, maybe, maybe stop saying that. Yeah. So basically what you try to say that talent doesn't exist. I mean, it might exist. Yes, it exists to some extent, but that's like maybe the three to 5% of the whole thing that like 95% of it, at least is just doing the, putting the work and mileage in it. I mean, yeah. I can also like, you know, relate with what you said, because, um, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say like my English is super good or anything, but since I was a kid, I was really good at English and, you know, even better than most of my peers. And I'm in an English, I'm an English teacher without going to university or anything. And, but here's the thing I've been like practicing English since I was eight. So when, when someone tries to say, like, you know, when when do I, when can I be fluent as you Ramtan? I'm like, you know, um, if you put in, like, you know, a start, like, here's the thing. I waste, I, w I didn't actually waste. I put a lot of times playing, like, I played a lot of RPG games. I watched a lot of movies and series. I was basically, I was, gr I was grown up by internet, basically. So when you take that in the case and, like, calculate the hours it took for me to get this good and fluent, it is a lot. And some of us are lucky to kind of, like, you know, start some stuff since we're, we're kids, like, especially artists, you know? Like, I, I, I saw this podcast on Andrew. Do you know Andrew Price, the Blender guy, Blender Guru? Yeah, 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 yeah. He had, he, I saw, I listened and watched one of his podcasts. He had, like, a professional Blender artist who was 15. <laughs> 
and he's taking like really big shot commissions and he's actually really good he has like 35k followers and he, like he's super good at blender and he started like when it was 12 and 12 and a half that's actually a really great podcast i recommend everyone to go check it out i remember that i forgot the guy's name but it's one of the episodes of enterprise podcast actually shout out to enterprise and yeah i mean like yeah i mean he because of this whole mindsets and things that are in society you might think that oh maybe because i'm 28 or 36 it's late for me or something like that i mean yeah i agree with you it will be m- much more awesome to start when you were younger but that's not the case right now i mean you can start as soon as you make a plan and start as soon as you can or you can keep you know being in the state i mean there's literally two choices you can I mean, pick yeah, which... part of this is for you to like enjoy it too right so so yeah. do you think like like i'm 40 years i should stop going to the movies no because you enjoy going to the movies so you should find i mean you should find something that you enjoy and you're gonna automatically just doing it a lot during your free time it's not like a i'm gonna have to make a career out of this you just accidentally get good enough to make a career so it's not just enjoy it so it won't be a problem for you no matter the age i i think yeah definitely and uh well we reached the the end of this episode i hope uh, everyone had a good time (laughs) and well what can people contact you if they had any question is your instagram okay oh they can contact me at uh, humay uh, that's H I E U M A Y on Twitter, Instagram. What else? Yeah, that's it. Our station, Twitter, Instagram. Oh, yeah, our station. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. The main one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I put them in the caption as well. And thanks so much for coming by for this episode. It was, it was a lot of fun. And thank you to anyone who tuned in and listened to this episode as well. I hope you all enjoyed this. It- as usual, and if there's any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below, whether on CastBox or YouTube, or even you know, send me a private message on the Korea Podcast Instagram page. I'll check them all out. And with that being said, take care, everyone. Have a good day. See you next episode. Bye. Bye bye.